Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Chris, and in the summer I do poolside perfume chit chat. Tonight's video is all about fragrances that I am going to be saving or wearing for any type of special occasion. Now, it is the first week of June, and when I think of June, I think of weddings. So weddings are very popular in June, July, August, September, and for that reason, several of these fragrances will be catered to people who are going to get married, who are going to be in a wedding party, or who are going to be guests at a wedding. Now, as far as I know, I haven't been invited to a wedding this summer, but nevertheless, if I get a last minute invite, or sometimes it's fun to pretend if I was going to get married, what fragrance would I wear? And all of these fragrances would be absolutely appropriate for any special occasion that one would be going to in the summer, including me. I think I have pulled 10. I'm trying to keep my videos to around 10 fragrances each. And with that, I'm just gonna get started. You're going to see my sweet little senior citizen dog wandering around the pool as I talk. So that's kind of the vibe of my poolside videos. They're very relaxed and laid back. That being said, I'm going to start the list with one of the most iconic fragrances in my collection. It's one of the oldest. It's been around since the 50s and is called Florissima by Creed. I'm missing the cap because like a dingling, I've saved a little bit of money and bought the tester and now of course it drives me crazy. But this is my second bottle and I fell in love with this perfume oh, like a long time ago when I was doing a sabbatical in Washington DC, I was still a student and I never really had enough money to go out to dinner. But as a treat to myself, I was staying in Chevy Chase, Maryland, which is a nice fancy suburb of Washington, DC. And I would go to the Cheesecake Factory, which was literally up the road from me or up the street within walking distance. And as a little treat, I would buy a cheesecake and I would kind of snack on it over the next couple days. But I was at the Cheesecake Factory and I was, as I was walking out, I kind of walked past the bar and I got this amazing with sillage of fragrance and I knew that it was coming from someone in the bar and I actually walked over and I tracked it down to the an impeccably dressed woman at the bar and I said excuse me you smell so good do you mind if I ask what you're wearing and she kind of lit up she was, was had a big smile on her face she goes absolutely and she told me the story about this fragrance which was this was a bespoke fragrance for Princess Grace of Monaco when she got married and it wasn't until years later that they mass produced it and Creed marketed it and sold it at their shops. But to me, this is the ultimate classic wedding day fragrance. It, it does smell a little bit old school. It smells a little bit vintagey. It definitely has kind of like a tuberose. We have flight exercises going on above. It's definitely a tuberose violet amber fragrance that has a, salt, a green saltiness to it. It's very, very unique. Nothing in my fragrance collection it smells anything like this. And even though I don't reach for it as much as I used to, this was close to my signature scent long, long ago. I think I spent like two years saving it for a bottle and that was all I wore for several years. It was very special to me. My tastes have changed, but this is still a very iconic fragrance and one that I would consider if I wanted to have a classic wedding and channel some classy, vintage timeless vibes, I would definitely pull, pull for Florissimo. So even though the vast majority of these fragrances are on the higher end, most of them are niche fragrances, because that is, if I, when I look back on it, you know, you spend hundreds of dollars on, maybe on flowers, you spend this ridiculous amount of money on your wedding and most of that you'll never see again whereas if you whereas your fragrance you're going to have with you for years and years so to me it's like money well spent i do have a couple in here that are very budget friendly and the next one is definitely budget friendly or budget friendly er and it is called it is by elizab and is elizab le parfum in white now elizab is a designer and he is well known for his wedding dresses and i think this fragrance is an homage to a wedding dress in a bottle, shall we say. It's basically that orange blossom, amber, jasmine, sweet vanilla combo that is popular in a lot of fragrances, namely like Libre, it smells, has a similar background DNA, if you like Libre, intense. Um, Jean-Paul Gaudier Le Classique and, and the original Elisab Le Parfum. They share a lot of similarities. However, this one does go in a different direction. To me, it's a little bit lighter. It's not as sticky sweet. The orange blossom isn't as prominent, but the florals aren't as prominent. It has a little bit of fruity sweetness. There's a little bit of peach in here. There's a little bit of patchouli in the dry down. 
and some sweet resin. So it is, it's florally sweet. It's florally sweet, but very mass appealing in my opinion. And I know this bottle was, uh, was definitely less than $100 and I'm pretty sure it was less than 60, but a, a lovely fragrance that I think would be very universally appealing and very appropriate for a wedding or something similar. Now, the, some of these fragrances kind of look like a wedding or a bride, and this one is no different. This is a fragrance I waited two years to get, and this is Whispers of Truth by the House of Siage. I don't think you can, I mean, even though the sun is out, I don't think you can appreciate the beauty because of the sun, which is why I'm wearing glasses. But this has like 400 Swarovski crystals set in this kind of beautiful bevel glass. I mean, this just looks like a bride. It's stunning. And I find this was sold out for like two years. It was sold out forever. And I gave up hope that it was ever going to come back. And as soon as it came back, I jumped on it. I bought it. This is so beautiful. And I would... I probably would wear this on a wedding day or I would definitely wear this going to a wedding because it's beautiful and it has fantastic lasting power. Now some people say it does smell similar to Baccarat 540 and I do get where the where they're getting that vibe. There are a lot of differences and I wouldn't say they're even in the same ballpark. This is very very fresh. It's citrusy fresh. It has a very citrusy fresh opening definitely has grapefruit i get like a, a tart kind of a peppy tart grapefruit opening with some orange and it has some florals and musk and oak moss and it does not have the sponge sugar sweetness of baccarat 540 at all i think the sweetness is not remotely similar there's a little bit of sweetness um, in the dry down this has like a sweet caramelly woody dry down which is quite intoxicating and again it's very very long lasting but it's very light and fresh and it just looks like a bride and i think on their website i actually wrote it down and actually the inspiration behind this perfume i had to write it down because i didn't want to forget is very similar to a wedding or just starting your life as a bride. So the perfume was inspired by new beginnings and starting the day with a blank canvas to navigate life in search of an authentic destiny. This is a fearless fragrance that awakes the soul and sets it on fire. As you wear it, you are reminded to unveil your truth and authentic destiny. I mean, like, how appropriate for a wedding day fragrance. So definitely at the top of my list for any special occasion, particularly in the summer or warmer months. This next one would definitely be in the running for me if I had to choose a wedding scent, particularly if my bouquet had gardenias and tuberose, because in my opinion, this is the most beautiful, realistic, gardenia tuberose fragrance on the market and I used to think I didn't like white florals or I was sometimes challenged by white florals. Nope, I'm actually loving white florals at the moment. The white florals just have to be done according to my taste. And if they're done realistically, I absolutely love them. And this fragrance by Boudoucita, it is Melody. This is Melody de l'Amour. I fell in love with this when I did the Discovery set. It was just like I fell head over heels in love and this is how this is how tuberose and gardenia smell in real life. I know this because I grow gardenias myself. They're very difficult to grow here in the Midwest, but you can grow a certain species. And I fell in love with tuberose when I went to Hawaii. And I used to get and, and Pat for years for our anniversary every year or my birthday or a special occasion would send me a tuberose bouquet because I loved them so much. But this is a beautiful interpretation of those two flowers and it just smells like a gorgeous wedding bouquet. There's nothing indolic about it. It's buttery and lovely. And even though at first when you first spray it, it's, it feels like it might come off a little bit heady, it wears lightly. In fact, I wore it to work and I was a little bit worried about wearing it to work that I was gonna overpower people and people could not smell it unless they came right in my scent bubble and said, oh, you smell really pretty. You smell like beautiful flowers. And I only sprayed like four or five times. So if you wanted this to last like for several hours for your wedding, you would probably want to spray more than that and definitely put it in your hair. That is a good trick that I use to increase longevity. I spray in my hair. And as you kind of move throughout the day, you get that nice reminder when you move your hair, but a beautiful fragrance for warm weather, special occasions. So the next fragrance is absolutely a fragrance I would choose if I were going on a tropical destination wedding. This was in my 
wedding video of last year. It's just a spectacular special perfume and it is Ylang and Gold by M. Mikalev. This is just a beautiful tropical getaway in a bottle. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. This has peach, lychee, sandalwood, coconut. Of course, it has Ylang in here and the Ylang Ylang smells like um, a banana pudding. Like some florals, some white, some florals can have a banana-esque or a banana pudding facet and I'm really into those florals right now so if you know of any let me know in the comment section below because I'm planning on doing a video on banana and banana florals coming up definitely within the month of June so if you know of any let me know I have some delicious ones this is one of them and because of that this is a gourmand floral so it has a heavy vanilla it's that vanilla coconut ylang fruitiness it's absolutely beautiful it has a little bit of oak moss in the dry down and a lovely warm sandalwood one of the prettiest gourmand florals in all of my collection and 100 percent kind of a tropical getaway vacation in a bottle my special Ylang and Gold. Another top contender for a wedding day fragrance, whether I was going to be the bride in a wedding party or actually a visitor or a guest, is a fragrance that again looks like a wedding day. This is a beautiful Valaya. I've never done a single perfume review and I did one on this one, so I will link that down below. So I won't go in great detail, but this is a beautiful citrusy, musky, floral. This will get you in the ballpark. This is in the ballpark. If you want to know another fragrance that smells similar, it's Fleur Narcartique. I prefer this one. This one is a marathon. I mean, this lasts forever. It has a very heavy musk. It has a watery musk that is not in Fleur Narcartique. And I find it a little bit more fresh and musky. It's, it's more fresh and musky and the type of musk is an aquatic musk and it's the same type of aquatic musk that's in Delina La Rose that musk which is an aquatic musk it's the same musk as in here but it's it's like a powerhouse in this one I actually had someone I don't I can't remember if it was on Instagram or here in the comments say that they couldn't this one couldn't get this one to last I have no explanation this is one of the strongest perfumes in my collection. I got this right when it came out. It was freezing cold here like the first week of January. I sprayed it on a coat. It lasted a solid week. You could smell it in my closet. Amazing. And for that reason, it's a great fragrance to wear as a wedding day perfume because you don't have to respray. It's going to last forever. Another one I would kind of spray myself with and spray my hair. The citruses in here are mandarin and it has an orange blossom and lily of the valley floral to me with that prominent aquatic musk in the background. Just love it and another perfect special fragrance for the hotter months. So last year I had Rouge Malachite in my wedding day fragrances. This year I'm gonna do a little bit of spin. I'm gonna change it up a little bit and I'm going to put Vert Malachite in this year's list. I smelled this when I was in Italy over the summer and it was like love at first sniff. This is a must try if you love lily, particularly some of the headier lilies like Stargazer Lily. That's one of my favorite florals with regards to scent profile. It's absolutely spectacular. This still has tuberose, but the tuberose isn't as strong as it is in Rouge Malachite, and that has a little bit of pepperiness, a little bit of spunk in the top. This one is much more buttery. So this is a buttery, less peppy white floral that is gorgeous. It's very vanillic. It's sweet in the dry down, has resins, and I want to say it also has a little bit of, it has ylang ylang in the dry down. Another one I wore to work fairly recently and it didn't overpower people. It it's, has a close scent bubble, but it lasts all day. And this is one I absolutely don't overspray if I'm going to wear it to work. But I would kind of be heavy handed if I was going to be at, you know, a special event. And if I didn't mention, it has a little bit of greenness from Pettigrain. Maybe that's where the green bottle comes from. But just a few sprays will last for a long time. I'm not going to overpower people, but it has great longevity. Another budget-friendly option, which is perfectly named for this video, is by Oscar de la Renta, and this is called Something Blue. Look at this cute little bottle. I mean, if you were a bride and you needed Something Blue, how perfect is this? And I think this runs in between like $30 and $60. This is nothing groundbreaking, but it is a super pretty floral perfume. It's a little shampoo-y and it's got these gauzy white florals floating around in a soft 
clean musk. It's a little bit green in the beginning, which dies down. It gets a little bit more powdery, a little bit softer, and that slight green subtle sharpness that starts off in the beginning balances out the powderiness in the dry down. I would say this is mild to moderate in wear and a very nice universally appealing designer fragrance that, in my opinion, is perfect for a bride who is looking for something blue. So as the sun is setting directly in my eyes, that is nature's way of telling me to finish up the video series that I did tonight. I, this is my third video of the evening. And I've got two more. I've got three more to go. And one which doesn't need any introduction is Blanche Bed. This definitely would be in the running for a bridal fragrance or if I was going to a wedding. It's so bright outside, you cannot appreciate it. But I got this right when it came out. It came out, I want to say January 2022, and I got it right away. And it is now orange in color. And that just tells you how it's got that rich vanillin in here. It's a gorgeous, oh, I love it more and more and more the longer I have it. It just gets better and better the longer I have it. And I've said in many previous videos, to me, this is like, delicate tuberose petals dipped in coconut oil dusted with cacao swimming in a beautiful botanical musk otherwise known as ambrette and there's a little mystical incense somewhere in the background it doesn't smell like incense per se i am a big incense fan but it is a fantasy note in here which i think just adds to the character of this delicious fragrance. I didn't wear it a lot last summer because it was so strong and overpowering. It was almost too heavy. As long as it's not a scorching hot day and or I'm going to be inside around air conditioning, this is a beautiful, one-of-a-kind, show-stopping, gorgeous fragrance that I absolutely would wear to a fancier event in the next several months. This next one is from a line that I speak of often and is by Maisa and this is called Dijonette sunset now i have purchased several from this house myself and i have been given several in pr and i want to say this one i made um, i made an order and this one was graciously tossed into my order because it was a brand new release so this is a new release as of 2023 and honestly look at this bottle again with the sun again with the sun setting right in our eyes it's going to be hard to appreciate the bottle but it's white it's white and gold. It just kind of looks like a bride. It looks like a wedding. It's a beautiful ambery, orange blossom, neroli fragrance. This will put you in the ballpark of Ruby in Vanilla Neroli. They smell similar. They're a similar vibe. That one, the neroli is much more prominent. In this one, the amber, in my opinion, is more prominent. This also has a note of coffee, so it's a little bit more ambery and warm in the dry down. So this definitely could be worn year round, summer, hot months included, but with that deep amberiness and the coffee notes, it's going to be perfect for, it's going to be appropriate for year round weather. And so the florals in here, if I didn't mention already, are mostly orange blossom and jasmine. More, more orange blossom than jasmine in my opinion, but I think they both kind of peek through. And Lucky Scent now carries this line. Now, I don't think they quite have the new release. They have the original release. And Jawahara in this line is very similar to this. This one is a little bit more ambery, stronger, richer take on Jawahara. So if you like Jawahara, you're probably more than likely going to love this. And this one has longer lasting power. And one I wouldn't necessarily wear as a bride. I mean, I could, but this one just screams to me bridal shower, baby shower, some sort of event like that. I would absolutely wear my Greenwich Village by Bond Number no. 9. It's the perfect special occasion shower scent. If you like lychee, you're gonna like this. It does kind of have a, a similar vibe. Some people say it smells like Baccarat 540. I can see that, but it's very different. This is fresh. It doesn't have that spun sugar, cotton candy sweetness. It's got peony, orange, um, ambroxan for sure a little bit of vanilla, and I want to say a little bit of praline for sweetness. Ah, this is just happiness in a bottle. This is happy, joyful, smile in a bottle. And my friend Anna says that this is like a Barbie perfume, and I absolutely agree. A terrific fragrance for fun gatherings when you're going to be around a lot of people. Very, very, very likable, universally appealing. This is a compliment getter. That was it, my wrap up of special occasion fragrances for the warmer months. A few of these would work year round, but mainly 
I'm thinking of spring through the fall. I would definitely choose one of the fragrances I mentioned tonight. If I didn't mention one of your favorites, let me know in the comment section below. Once again, thanks for sticking around. If this is your first time, I appreciate you stopping by. I'd love to see you on the next one. And with that, good night. That's kind of the vibe of my poolside videos. They're very relaxed and laid back. 